Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Welcome to the beginning of another week of AutoLine Daily. I'm John McElroy, and here is the latest news. Hey, you can forget hybrids and electric cars. The fastest growing technology in the automotive powertrain arena is the turbocharger, because sales of those small displacement boosted engines are growing like weeds. Ward's Auto reports that turbocharger sales hit nearly 7% of the U.S. market last year, that's up from less than 3% the year before. Borg Warner, one of the largest suppliers of turbos, says that in five years, 40% of all passenger vehicles in the U.S. will have a turbo. And that will jump to 80% in 2020. Honeywell, which owns Garrett Turbochargers, and Continental, which is just getting into the turbo business, will also play a big role in the turbocharger market. And speaking of growing by leaps and bounds, Volkswagen could be about to get bigger. According to Reuters, VW is discussing whether to take a stake in Navistar to help it compete with Daimler in North America. And of course, Daimler owns Freightliner. VW owns Swedish truck maker Scania, which is not that big in the US, and it owns German truck maker MAN, but that competes mainly in Europe and other emerging markets. Click and Clack, the Tappet brothers, are going to retire this fall. The radio program Car Talk has been a staple of national public radio for 25 years, hosted by the wisecracking Magliozzi brothers, Tom, who is 75 years old, and Ray, who is 62. Car Talk is the highest rated program on NPR with over 3 million listeners, but the program will continue in reruns, and with 25 years worth of material, it could go on for a long time. Honda just introduced a new minivan in China called the Elysian. It's powered by a 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine made it to a five-speed automatic. It's built on the same platform as the Accord and can seat up to seven people. At a starting price of about $45,000, the Elysian costs more than the Odyssey, which starts at $36,000 in China. The Elysian has only been sold in Japan since 2004, but now that it's in China, could Honda be looking at selling it in other markets as well? We'll have to watch that one. The 2013 SRT Viper GTS-R race car just completed its first on-track test. Luckily for the entire SRT team, everything appears to have gone according to plan. Look for the 2013 Viper GTSR to compete in the GT class of the American Le Mans series later this year. Potholes are the bane of every motorist. If you live in a northern climate, especially here in Michigan, you're all too familiar with these wheel cracking, tire flattening, strut bending divots. Autoblog reports that students at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, have come up with a new temporary fix for chuck holes. They've figured out a way to fill them with liquid. Normally, this would just make a puddle and a big mess, but the students have created a special Kevlar bag that gets topped off with a non-Newtonian fluid. What's that? Well, they're materials that are liquid under normal conditions, but behave like solids when force is suddenly applied to them. They can flow to conform to the shape of a pothole, but they immediately stiffen up as a vehicle rolls over them. So far, it appears the fix works quite well, and the cost is similar to a conventional repair. More testing during different seasons is needed, but you know, this is a brilliant idea. I'm Craig Cole out in the Nevada desert putting the 2013 Scion FRS through its paces and that report is coming your way next. Look at this. Bridgestone's using natural rubber, researching ways to enhance its quality and performance. 
and making their factories more environmentally friendly, producing products that save on fuel and emissions, and some that can be reused again, and promoting eco-friendly and safety driving campaigns. One team, one planet. Bridgestone. Look at the scenery around me. It is so beautiful, so breathtaking, it's hard not to have an emotional response to it. Now check out this car here. It's the 2013 Scion FRS. And from the way this thing looks to the way it drives, it's the first truly emotional Toyota we've seen in years. FRS stands for Front Engine Rear Wheel Drive Sport. It was inspired by performance cars from Toyota's past, models like the AE86 and the 2000 GT. In Japan, it's actually called the Hachiroku, which means 8.6, drawing on some of this heritage. Scion's goal with the FRS was to put driving pleasure within reach of ordinary enthusiasts. And that's why the base price of the FRS is just $25,000, including processing and delivery. Folks at Scion are thrilled about the FRS. They're calling it a halo car for the brand, but surprisingly, this Radiant Crown was no solo project. Toyota collaborated with an unexpected adversary. We've uh, um, partnered with Subaru uh, from a financial standpoint, and also too, you know, the, our past heritage cars actually featured um, an engine similar to, you know, something that we wanted to actually apply to the Scion FRS, and that being a Boxster engine. Um, so, you know, the, the, uh, the marriage, if you will, or the uh, collaboration, if you will, was almost a very natural one at that. The two companies put together a group of engineers called Team 86 to develop the FRS, along with its clone, the BRZ. Subaru's boxer four-cylinder architecture was the basis for this car's engine. All told, output is an even 200 horsepower with 151 pound-feet of torque. Another interesting numerical tie-in are the dimensions of this power plant. It's perfectly square with a bore and stroke of 86 millimeters, and that yields a displacement of two liters. Inside, the FRS is very nicely turned out. The dashboard and the door uppers are both soft, a nice touch, and they've got an attractive applique that runs across on the passenger side of the dashboard. They're billing this car as a two plus two, but don't expect to fit anyone in the back seat. It's pretty tight back there. They do, however, tell us that you can fit four full-size wheels and tires in the back there when you fold the rear seat down, which is perfect for a day at the track. And that's where the FRS is at its best. The steering is razor sharp, the shifter feels like a scientific instrument in its precision, and the chassis is tight and tossable without pounding you into a pulp. Altogether, these are attributes Scion is proud to highlight. People still have a passion for driving. People still want to drive a car and have a fun car to drive, but let's make it obtainable by the average American person out there who doesn't have 60, 70, 90 thousand dollars to spend. And so one of the taglines we're using in the Scion marketing is bringing sport back to the car and really the fun of driving. Not thinking about, I'm in my car so I can use my cell phone or I'm in my car so I can listen to my stereo. I'm in my car because I love driving my car. Well, after driving the Scion FRS, it's everything Toyota promised. It's a small, lightweight sports car. Yeah, it's a little bit down on power, so don't expect to outrun that Dodge Challenger SRT8 that's sitting in the lane next to you. But that's not what this car is for. It's all about driving finesse, and that is exactly what it delivers. Reporting from Pahrump, Nevada for Autoline Daily, I'm Craig Cole. Sales of the FRS and its cousin, the Subaru BRZ, are just getting going, but so far Subaru is doing a better job of selling them. Last month, the Subaru BRZ racked up 271 sales in the American market, while Scion sold 86 FRSs. And that wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching. We will see you tomorrow.